Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan. I hope you're doing well today. I'm sorry it's been so long. It's been over a week since my last video upload and uh, I've tried to put some community posts out there and stuff. Just try to have something to talk about with you guys. Um, I just haven't been in a reading mood here lately. I know I'm doing the Christmas books right now. I have like two more left. It's Beware the Snowman and uh, 12 Screams of Christmas. <laughs> so I'm trying to get back in the mood to uh, get those done. I might take a break in January, but we'll get there when we get there. But uh, I'm trying to get back in the mood <laughs> of reading to pick up some reviews for you guys. I'm sorry it's been so stretched so thin lately with the channel. Uh, on my other channel, I've been reviewing a lot of stuff on there and uploading, so that's been fun. Uh, it is what it is. <laughs> anyway, today I'm going to be reviewing an old classic Goosebumps book. This is number 47. It doesn't really count as a Christmas book. I always heard people say it was, but apparently it's really not. It has, like, snow involved a little bit. So, uh doesn't really count but I just want to let you know that ahead of time it is legend of the lost legend now I want to let you know something too um, I always talk about some of the earlier goosebumps books I ever got I have three copies of this book uh, this particular one is the one that my dad's mom my grandma on my dad's side gave me when I was very young um, this is one of the first goosebumps books I ever got and I never read it I'm sorry grandma never read it um, I just now read it for the first time, and I really liked it a lot. And of course, <laughs> I have some other copies here too. Um, this particular copy was a, uh, I guess, just one that I was accidentally sent, or it came in a bundle of other books I wanted to get really bad. I don't remember which one it was, but I got this one other copy too. And I like the book enough that I'm glad I kind of have bonus copies. I didn't love the book, but I liked it enough where I'm glad I have bonus copies. And of course, one of the uh, Goosebumps Collector's Tins, T-I-N, not T-E-N, where they have some of the old covers and stuff, the Tim Jacobus covers, in the newer releases and tins that are metal cases that have like five books in them. One of those had one in it as well. It's very nice coloring, looks just like the old books, um, a little bit thinner than my copies, but yeah, it looks really cool, so I'm glad to have a newer looking copy of that too. Uh, so yeah, I have three copies of those, but this is the one I read out of, the one that my grandmother gave me. And, uh... This was not from the skating rink birthday party that I talk about all the time on my channel, where I was given a huge box of Goosebumps books, my first ever Goosebumps books, uh, after I got exposed to the TV show and loved the show so much. Um, this was probably like that Christmas my grandmother got me this and Curse of Camp Cold Lake. Is that what it's called? Curse of Camp Cold Lake? I think it's the title. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, the one with the really scary cover. So Legend of the Lost Legend, what is this book about? I really like the premise for this. I think it was a really cool story idea that worked out really well for the most part. It got a little a little wacky in the ending, I'll be honest with you. The ending is kind of the weak spot here, but most of this book I really enjoyed. I think it had a lot to offer. Very fun, kind of small-time adventurous feel to it. Uh, essentially, there's a brother and sister who go camping with their dad, and essentially they're looking for this thing called the Legend of the Lost Legend. Well... I guess it's just the lost legend, but uh, it's like an urban legend that's been missing for 500 years that no one's been able to find. And everybody's looked in a certain area out in these woods for them. Nobody can find them. And the dad's getting kind of fed up with the brother and sister because they are not really contributing too much to the actual trip itself. Um, so basically, in the middle of the night, they have a dog come to them, and they have like a note on it. It basically says, I know what you're looking for, you know, follow my dog or whatever. So they follow the dog out into the woods by themselves. I think it's at nighttime too, which is a really horrible idea. Anybody who's ever been out in the woods or lived in the woods, nighttime, you can't see anything. <laughs> it's like, if for anybody out there who happens to not be uh, a southerner like myself, you don't even know how dark the woods get. You don't know. It is horrifying. I'm terrified of the dark in that sense, like where I can't see anything at all. Even the moonlight doesn't help you out. Yeah, that affects me. So this story really involved a terror that I find personally scary. That really gets to me many many of the same ways that uh, a lot of these found footage horror films that have like just people roaming around in the dark woods. That kind of thing really gets to me. So premise like this really work. Um, essentially, the brother and sister follow the dog back to a cabin uh, or some kind of house cabin thing, and they meet a woman named Ivana, who essentially is going to help them try to find the lost legend. And Ivana is apparently the woman on the cover here. I've always wondered if that's like just a Viking villain or what. No, Ivana is actually kind of sweet. She has a very weird, dark sense of humor, so I kind of can relate to her. 
but uh, <laughs> this kind of has elements of a Hansel and Gretel type of feel to it, and I like that. I think it adds something to the story a little bit, uh, more in the background and the subtext more than anything, but it works really well, and I like it. I think it's a fun story. The only thing that really threw me off, I thought I was getting a completely different book when this book started up. Basically, the dad is telling the brother and sister kind of a, uh, a story. He likes to tell them stories because he's a writer for a living, and he tells them a story he's been telling them, and every time he comes up with a new chapter of where they're going to go in the story, you know, he'll kind of sit down and tell them the new chapter. And, like, the first two or three chapters of this book are, like, the brother and sister out in, like, the Arctic, and their sleigh dogs take off and leave them behind out in the Arctic. And I was like, whoa, what kind of book are we getting this time around? This is going to be, like, Abominable Snowman times two. That was a tense setup, and then it turned out to be a fake-out. To, ex to extend the book ten pages, you know? I was really bummed about that, because I thought that was a really cool idea for a story setup. But even so, the actual book we got, I really enjoy. Again, the ending is not perfect. I'm a little let down with what kind of ending we got here. I don't hate it. Certainly don't hate it. It's just, it's not what I wanted it to be. I think we could have done better. I really do. Uh, it's just, it was a letdown. It was, it was genuinely a letdown. I'm kind of bummed out about that. But overall, I mean, the book was solid. I had a good time reading it. I wish I had kind of spent more time reading it consistently. But overall, I was able to fly through the book when I was reading it because it was just a really engaging read. It was a good time. Um, I enjoyed it. Legend of the Lost Legends is kind of one of those books that I always had on my shelf. And again, sorry, Grand Mafia, happened to be watching this. But uh, I just never wanted to read it. It's just one of those books, like, the cover was interesting. It was a cool-looking cover. It just never really appealed to me enough to want to read it, like Not a Living Dummy or Not a Living Dummy 3 or anything like that, 2, anything like that, the big stuff that we all talk about. It didn't appeal to me the way those covers did. So I always kind of just threw that to the side. I was guilty of that just like all of us were as kids. And uh, I'm glad I read it. I'm glad I had the time to read it. And it was good. It was really good. So anyway, when it comes to Legend of the Lost Legend, if I had to rate this on a five-star basis, I would probably give this book about a three out of five stars. I liked it a lot. It's a really solid read. Really enjoyed this. Um, it's not perfect, but... It's pretty good. I like the premise. I think the story set up with the woods thing. Really effective. I like the certain encounters with certain antagonists that we deal with are pretty wild and scary. Uh, yeah, I dug it a lot. I thought it had a lot of good moments in it. So, what are your thoughts on Legend of the Lost Legend? Put your thoughts and comments down below. I would love to hear what you guys have to say about this wacky little read. I'm a little sorry that uh, I read this at Christmas time. It has the snowy element to it, but not really. Um, so it's not really a Christmas book, so forgive me for that. I don't know why everybody kept telling me to read this for Christmas books. Not that all of you guys did, but like online, that's all I kept seeing was Legend of the Lost Legends, one of the Christmas books. We don't have many. That was a lie. So, anyway, what are your thoughts? Put them down below. Thank you for watching. God bless you guys. Merry Christmas, and goodbye.